In the days after the D-Day landings, there was a huge amount of slaughter and execution committed by the Allies, and also by the German army. The Allies would admit later that following the landings, they were not really in the business of taking prisoners of war, being focused on making a foothold back in Europe and pushing the Germans back. But the Germans would commit many war crimes as the Allies' soldiers fell into their captivity. They executed dozens of Canadian soldiers in the headquarters of German generals and commanders, and many more were shot in the graveyards of the Ardennes Abbey. But there were many skirmishes and battles fought around Normandy in the days after, and one of those was the Battle of Greniers, which saw American paratroopers of the US 82nd Airborne Division fighting in the town and the village against the 17th SS Panzer Grenadiers. But after the fierce fighting, the Germans would regain the village, but no one could have anticipated the executions that they would carry out against the American soldiers. Join us today as we look at the executions of the American soldiers slaughtered by the German army. And to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Before the Normandy landings began on the 6th of June 1944, there were plane loads of Allied paratroopers who were parachuted into France behind enemy lines under the cover of darkness. At around 2am, 12 aircraft filled with American paratroopers from the 3rd Battalion of the 507th Parachute Infantry Regiment, who were part of the 82nd Airborne Division, were dropped. They landed in the marshland south of Calentan, which would become a key stronghold in Normandy, but they were meant to be dropped around 18 miles northwest at a place designated as Drop Zone T, close to Amfreville. However, they got close to the village of Grains. This was the most missed drop of the American airborne units of D-Day, and because of this, the men who landed were in severe danger. Eight hours later, 25 paratroopers, led by Captain Leroy Brummett, had got together in the village. But then two hours later, more paratroopers joined, and these were led by Major Charles D. Johnson. But the soldiers were very far behind enemy lines, and as they were miles from their drop zone, the decision was made for the Americans to dig in, and to stay where they landed, and they were to wait for the advancing American soldiers. They began to dig in and secure defensive positions, and they did have a number of mortars around the cemetery, which were in place, and a group of soldiers were also sent to climb the church bell tower, and to keep a lookout for German soldiers. The lookout position was great, and the observer could see miles of roads and paths leading to the village of Grenz, but then a command post was set up at the boys' school there. They continued to dig in, and more misdropped Americans arrived in the village, and as the day progressed, a group of 182 Americans had gathered. But the village mayor that morning woke up, and he cooperated with the Americans, and he later tried to ruse as many supplies as he could. The paratroopers were fed, and the French knew that this was treason, and would all result in execution if the Germans found out they were collaborating with the Americans, their enemies. The women of Grenz began to cook all day to provide meals for the Americans, and children also helped to gather equipment to help secure a perimeter. However, after a few days, trouble was on the horizon. In the afternoon of the 10th of June, a mechanised infantry patrol came towards a defensive position, and some of the Americans allowed the patrol to get close, and then they opened fire and killed four soldiers. When they searched the bodies, they found that this was a recon battalion, was part of a bigger armoured division, meaning that it was possible that there was a panzer division nearby. But on the Sunday, everything was quiet, and there was even a church service, but this was interrupted by a woman who ran in screaming, The Germans are coming, save yourselves. After this, there was a first assault, but the Germans could not get close to Grenz. Then the Germans around 2pm started bombarding Grenz by mortar fire, and an assault was launched by infantry, who tried to flank the village. But the attackers moved quickly, and the perimeter was almost breached. But the movement of forces allowed the line to be held, and the supporting fire held off the advancing infantry, but the mortar fire did lead to heavy losses. They managed to kill dozens of Germans, who were caught in the machine gun fire defending the village, but then in the evening, German heavy artillery could be heard. Two 88mm guns opened up on the village from a few kilometres away, and this killed Major Johnson, and the observation post in the bell tower was destroyed. This meant that the Americans could not effectively use their mortars, 
but the Germans then pushed that night into Grenz, and there were just a few pockets of resistance, and many Americans ran out of bullets. But the order was then given by Captain Brummett for the Americans to pair up and to try and get to Carentan or St. Mary Glees. The 17th SS Panzergrenadier Division had been conducting the last assault on Grenz, and when they attacked, they had around 2,000 men, meaning the Germans had 10 soldiers to every one American. The paratroopers did kill 100 Germans and wounded 200 more, but after the village fell, the 17th SS men went into the church and they found the aid station. Captain Abraham Sofian was a battalion surgeon who had been a paratrooper who had landed in, and he then surrendered the building to the SS men by waving a white flag, and the SS men then forced the captain and his two medics and helpers, along with 14 wounded Americans, to stand up against the wall. These were now technically classed as prisoners of war, and they should have been treated as this and protected under the Geneva Convention. They should have been processed and then sent to a prisoner of war camp, but what came next would show the horror of the SS. The wounded Americans were split into two and were slaughtered. One group of five men was taken to the edge of a pond, which was found close by, and the SS men then stabbed them with their bayonets before they dumped their remains in the water. The other group of nine men were taken into a field around four kilometres to the south, near to the village, and they were then told to dig a pit and kneel down. Then an executioner went behind each of the American men and put a bullet through their head, and then pushed their bodies into the grave that they had dug. Captain Sofian and the two medics were also slaughtered, meaning that the SS men had executed 17 Americans in this war crime. But they would not stop there. They then rounded up the French civilians, who they thought had helped the Americans, and 44 villagers were gathered and interrogated. SS men then dragged two priests, they then shot them next to their rectory, they then slaughtered a woman and an elderly woman in their beds, and they ransacked the village. Two days later they burned the village of Grenz to the ground, and burned the bodies of the French priests and women that they had slaughtered. The blades destroyed 66 homes, as well as most of the other buildings. The bravery of those Americans inside of the village of Grenz was remarkable, as they actually stopped the advance of the 17th SS Panzergrenadiers, getting to a strategic point of Carentan, before the 101st Airborne Division did. But in the horror, the Americans had lost 32 men, with 17 of these being executed. The losses they inflicted on the Germans was substantial, with over 100 dead and around 200 wounded, but 26 French civilians were also executed in the reprisal. The war crimes showed how brutal and horrific the SS could be, and how they had no consideration for the lives of prisoners. They were outraged at the losses that were sustained on their part, and decided to slaughter the innocent and also the wounded in a brazen act of evil. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.